I want to find out how this three kilogram block of metal is turned into one of these, which is a 150 gram chain ring. I'm going to show you the whole process from start to finish, including looking at the computer design, how on earth the teeth are made the right shape, and also how you take that computer design and turn it into a physical part. But this isn't any normal chain ring. This one is custom machined from titanium, making it far superior to your traditional aluminium one. To find out, I've come to see Tom Sturdy, a world-renowned frame builder and engineering expert who makes a vast selection of bike components and frame hardware in-house for his titanium bikes. Okay, Tom, we're stood at some of a very expensive looking fancy machine. Talk us through what on earth it actually is and then how this is started in the process of making a chain ring. Sure. Um, yeah, so, well, by machining standards, this is actually a really small machine. So. Uh, it's a, a CNC milling machine, a three axis. So what that means, so computer numerically controlled milling machine. So that's what CNC stands C for. Yeah. yeah. Um, so basically um, what this allows us to do is to write a computer code basically that will then tell the machine uh, how to remove material from whatever it is that we're machining. So okay. we use it for a range of different tasks. Um, a lot of it is is involved in the manufacturing of the bikes that we produce. Um, but then, like you say, we also produce a range of components for our bikes. So it, it's always doing a, a range of different things. Um, and a lot of the way that we use this machine is specific to the fact that we're constantly changing jobs on it, that sort of stuff. Okay, so when it comes to the chain ring that we're talking about today, that was kind of what I wanted to see the process of how it ma is made. Yep. What do we start with? What does the piece of material look like? So. Um, yeah, so we're going to start with um, a, a bit of... <laughs> a giant so, wedge. Yeah, basically uh, it's, it's titanium bar stock. So this was part of a big long bar, it's about 250 mil diameter. And then um, at, we, we get it in, in a version of this form. So it'll either be saw cut yeah. or this one you can see has been turned because uh, so someone Okay. Has turned that on a big lathe to get the surface down to the rough height that we need. So that's like giving you your base starting shape, yeah? Yeah, so the actual raw material would have looked different to this, but this is how we're going to start. Um, uh, and then we need to basically hold that in the machine. Um, and then we're going to run through a series of different programs that we've written. Uh, to go through a few different stages and basically the, the machine is going to remove material until we're left with That's what kind we of, want. Which it is feels crazy to think that that is going to come from that and it feels that like there's going to be lots to, ma to material to remove. Yeah, there's, uh, well, weight-wise you can feel what's coming out of it. <laughs> yeah, I mean that is super light and this, this is kind of crazy how heavy yeah. it is. Um, so there's multiple steps to this process and the first one, I guess we need to get this kind of into the machine and get it to a shape and height that you know relates to the computer design. Yeah, the, the machine basically will just do whatever the program tells it to do. Yeah. Uh, so the tool will spin at whatever speed you tell the tool to spin and then it will just go wherever you tell it. It doesn't know what's in it. Uh, so we have to make sure that whatever we put in the machine is in the same place and is roughly the same shape as what the computer thinks it is. Yeah. Otherwise, the machine will just do what the computer tells it to and you'll crash in. So it could be going in mid-air or it could be like hammering through material that it didn't know was there. Uh, yeah, mid-air is good. <laughs> material that it didn't know is there is not good. Okay, so shall we get the piece in? Because I want to see how this process goes. And then I guess kind of before you really start this off, we need to have like some sort of design and see if how are you going from idea to like a computer design. Sure. Yeah. All right. The first part of well, making anything, uh, because everything's relying on the computer, you've got to, you know, whatever, whatever idea it is you've got, you've got to be able to translate that into um, a, a, a model, a 3D model on yeah, this CAD system, so computer-aided design. Um, so yeah, in this case, for something like a chain ring, there's quite a lot to consider. Um, you've got, the, I mean, the main, the main job of it is to carry the chain, right? Yeah. So the, the teeth have got to be the right shape to mesh properly with the links of the chain 
so the chain that we're going to chain ring that we're going to machine today is a, a one by chain ring. Mm -hmm. So, for example, that is going to have a what's known as a narrow wide tooth profile, where there is a narrow tooth and a wide tooth, and that corresponds to the narrower and the wider link on the chain. I'm amazed on how on earth you're going to get the teeth the right shape. I mean, I'm assuming you can't just ring up Shimano or Stram and be like, hey, can I have the design for this? How, how do you make it the right shapes? Uh, yeah, so, uh, no, you can't do that. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, you could, they probably wouldn't tell you. Yeah. Um, you've got you've to think about what the, what the tooth has got to do, which, yeah, when the, when the chain's engaged, then that's, that's fairly straightforward. Yeah. It's literally just holding the roller there. So um, that's relevant to the size of the chain roller, yeah? Yeah, so you've okay. got the, the roller on the, on the link of the pin, and that'll be, um, that'll be whatever diameter that is. Mm, almost all chains are very similar, some are slightly different, so yeah, it depends what chain it is that you're looking for the chain ring to mesh with. So the basic shape has got to be just a little bit bigger than that, right? Yeah. So that it can actually fit in. It can't be exactly the same size, otherwise it wouldn't fit together, yeah. so there has to be a bit of clearance. Yeah. Um, and then you've got to have some features that allow the chain to hook onto those teeth and off those teeth easily without being caught by the teeth as the chain ring is rotating in use. Um, so you'll have to uh, effectively do some measurements of how each link is going to rotate as it lands yeah. so that you make sure you don't put material that would stop it landing. So it's almost like creating tools. a little bit of a valley yeah. to allow it to sort of slide in but slide back out at the same yeah, time. Exactly, okay, yeah. that I kind of I'm understanding that a little bit more now. So then there's there's other features like the fact that the chain line isn't going to be straight. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it could be if it was a fixed gear bike, yeah. I suppose, but most bikes the, there isn't going to be. So you have to also consider the fact that the the chain is going to want to be coming onto the chain ring from a different So then you've got plane. to taper the sides as well. So you've got to taper the sides to make sure oh, that yeah. it basically guides the chain on. So there's quite a few features to think about. And you'll see if you look at different chain ring designs, lots of different yeah, people come up with lots of different solutions. Yes. You're going to start with the effectively something like that, where it's just literally the profile of the tooth. Uh, and if it's going to be a round chain ring, mm -hmm. then that profile is going to be rotated however many times so around the So that one individual piece, okay. And then, then you can get the program to then you know, effectively rotate that shape around, around a as circle. As many times as you need. Yeah, and okay. then you can add features to it to thicken some teeth and make some teeth thinner. Um, then you've got to work out how that chain ring is being mounted to the crank, so whether that's uh, directly mounted to the crank arm, so like a sort of the spider is built into the yeah. chain ring, if you like, or whether it's mounted to a separate piece. So this shape is like actually, it's like a design feature that we use quite a lot in the um, other frame parts that we make. So um, essentially this is a, a rib structure that's patterned around a circle. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just, in our case, it just mirrors um, some a design feature that we have on the inside, a lot of the printer parts that we make. So for the string, yeah. Okay. So it, it's like basically that's where the basic shape comes from. So from our point of view, that's just a little design nod to the other parts that we make. Oh, okay. Um, and then the orientation of it and the how many is down to how strong you want it to be. That gives a quick explainer on how you go from idea to computer design. But next, I need to understand how that design is turned into instructions for the CNC machine. That's using computer-aided manufacturing, so a slightly different, effectively a different part of the computer software where you will uh, create um, a program which tells the machine where to remove materials. And so it's this code which relates back to what we said at the start, which is a CNC machine, which stands for, what was it, Computer Numerical Control. Control yeah. Well, that is all making far more sense to me now. Shall we go and check on the Progress's chain ring? Yep. Let's do it. This initial program took just 30 minutes to complete, and as you can see, the machine is continually flooding the area with liquid. This acts as a coolant and lubricant to extend the cutting tool's life, and also to help remove the material that has just been cut away. Now the stock is ready, uh, we can make a chain ring. All right. And so now we know that this plate here is the thickness that the computer thinks it is uh, and it's got some of the features in there that are going to allow us to keep track of 
where the part is in the middle of this so that when we have finished the first side, we can flip it over. Basically now we can put this back in with a couple of other additional features on the plate which are going to allow us to locate it. Yeah. Um, and then we can press so go on the So that's these trainer. pins on the outside, yeah? Yeah, so uh, we, there's, we use a, there's a range of different fixtures here that we use for holding different parts. So yeah, um, yeah depending on what part you're holding, there's different ways that you can hold it. Uh, in this case, we're using some dowel pins. So yeah, so we're going to make a 42 tooth one by chain ring. Yeah. And uh, so I need to find the program that I've already loaded onto the memory in the machine. So it's, it's already here. Um, and we need the first operation of the top side. The, yeah, so we're going to do the outer face is what we're going to do first here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and then going to check that all those tools match up to all the tools that I've got in the machine so that it doesn't start doing the wrong thing. Yeah. Well, so the way we've got it, the way I've written the program is that basically what it, I, I want to walk away from the machine now. Mm. So what it's going to do is between each tool change, <coughs> it's going to measure the tool so that it will detect if the tool is broken and then the machine will stop so that it doesn't go and destroy a load of other tools. So that's the first operation done. So we've got <laughs> almost half of it. This is actually crazy. So this is, over half a chain ring done, right? Because we've already got a lot of these cutouts done. Yeah, most of the, it, that's the, the, the longest operation on a, on a one by chain ring, because there's not really any complicated features on the backside, it's just going to dish out the rest. So I can already feel it's way lighter than it used to be, because all our material's gone. So this is best part, what, two or so hours work? Yeah, it's done a couple of hours at this stage. Um, yeah, removing quite a lot of material, it'll actually completely distort the plates as well. So um, that's another thing that you sort of have to learn to account for with machining is all of that material gone, that whole plate will have bowed okay. and be a different shape now. So now we need to flip this over, locate it because we've got these little cutouts for the dowels yeah. and start the correct program around the machine again. And then I guess we'll come back when I've finished chain ring. Yeah, you just got to make sure it goes in the right way. So Tom, we're on the last step of the process and at the moment the machine is working its way around to release the chain ring from the block, is that right? Yeah, so the mo is basically done everything but the chain ring is still attached by a very thin bit of metal to this outer mm -hmm. or the original plate. Um, so we've added some extra bolts that holds the chain ring to the fixture and it's just going to go around and cut, do that last, cutting that last final bit of material. So when it comes out, we'll have to unbolt the chain ring from the block and then also remove that outer ring as well. Yeah, so the chain ring's then going to be separate to the rest of it. Okay. Um, yeah. How long is this going to take? Uh, it'll be about another 30 minutes. Oh, pretty good. All right. So some, what, five, six hours later, we've got a finished chain ring. Yep. Um, yeah, obviously the total time it takes depends on the size of it. The bigger chain rings are a lot yeah. slower um, than these ones. But the first thing that's blowing my mind is the fact that we've gone from this, which is about three kilograms, to that, which is about 150 grams. Yep. Which is kind of crazy, but there's lots of different things I think we should probably talk about. And the first and most obvious question, I think lots of people are going to wonder, is why on earth would you go through all of this work and extra effort to create a chain ring out of titanium when you could seemingly buy one from aluminium, made from aluminium online for like 20, 30, 40 pounds? Yeah, so, you know, the fact that we're machining it out of titanium is pretty rare. There's not many places doing that. Um, it is challenging, it's really expensive, it's really slow, and those are all of the things that, yeah. um, that make it expensive. Um, you know, for us, it's very specific to the products, the other products that we, we make. So uh, the, the idea behind making the titanium chain ring in the first place came because uh, we do a reasonable amount of um, single chain ring builds, um, and certainly with 11, 12 speed systems, chain ring wear was happening pretty quickly on yeah. aluminium rings. So the original idea came because we wanted to make a chain ring that would last significantly longer than they were otherwise lasting. Um, and the material wears a lot better than an aluminium chain ring would. So you typically will get five to six times the life out of a 
titanium chain ring than you would out of the... That's crazy, uh, you know, potentially, yeah. Potentially, you know, if you change your chain <clears throat> before it gets to you know, a point where... I, I've seen some chain rings that have done tens of thousands of miles and there's almost no sign of wear on them. So it is a much more durable um, material yeah. from that point of view. Uh, yeah, the downsides obviously being all of what you already discussed. <laughs> so yeah. how much sort of are we looking at for this raw material? Because the cost involved, obviously, for any product is not only the raw material, but the energy, the time taken, yeah. the fact that you've got to have some knowledge and expertise to make it. You can't just rustle a chain ring up out of nowhere. Yeah. So what are sort of some of the costs involved? Yeah, so obviously you've got raw, raw material costs, um, which depending on where you are, so in the UK we don't, we don't really make, we don't have any of that raw material coming domestically, yeah. so all of that's imported. That, that material in itself, you could be talking somewhere around the £100 mark. Just for like a, a almost useless piece of metal until you've done something good with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, also, that means that all of the rest of this material is now sat in one of those buckets behind the machine. Yep. So, what, what do we do with that? I'm, I'm hoping you're going to tell me you're going to recycle it. Yeah, we do. <laughs> so, um, depending on the size of the chain ring um, and what we're making, often we'll make use of what's left as well. So, okay. we, we try and buy, you know, it makes sense for us to try and buy the this kind of plate as close to the final shape as we want. And, and that's, you know, a lot of other manufacturing facilities, there's a huge advantage to doing that. So if you're only making one particular product, um, then often you will go to quite a lot of effort to get the stock very close to what you want it to I, be. I presume so you're removing you, less. I presume if you're going to award, I don't know, find the titanium shop. <laughs> you yeah. could, if you went, right, we'll have a hundred thousand of these one things, they're probably more inclined to make it close to the size you want in the first place. Yeah, machining, <laughs> any sort of CNC machining process is definitely, you know, you, unlike some of the other parts that we make which involve additive manufacturing, yeah. with what you've seen, uh, quantity does, you, you get volume discount because, you know, if you're setting the machine up once, yeah. you only have to press a button a few times for it to do multiples of it. Yeah. It's the same sort of principle. So, so it's, it's cool to think that that chain ring is, is completely finished after it's been in the CNC machine and run a couple of different yeah. stages. So is that the same as, sort of, I want to say run of the mill, but the chain rings that you see from the three big manufacturers, are they kind of doing the same thing but on bigger scale? Yeah, the, I mean, the, if you are, you know, if you are making bigger production runs of a particular part, then there's probably steps that you would do, for example, to get your raw stock closer to what you want. So there's less time spent prepping the stock, or, you know, you might, they might cast uh, the raw material into something that is very close to the original. So the, there will be some different differences there that essentially help it be something that can be scaled to make thousands of them much quicker. A lot of that is helped by just using a different material, for example. Yeah. Aluminium is much, much faster than machine. It's also fairly easy to cast into a, a shape to start with. Um, but, but, so yes, there will be differences, yeah. um, but uh, the underlying principle is, is the same, yeah. Okay, well, I mean, I found it absolutely fascinating, Tom, to go from raw material to finished item. I hope everyone at home has found it interesting too. Thanks for taking the time and effort to show us the process. No worries. And um, please do get involved in the comments section down below. Let us know if you found this video informative, interesting and helpful. And if you want to see more cool bike tech related videos, subscribe to GCN Tech. Right Tom, thanks very much man. No worries. There you go.